Hello, hello. It is Wednesday, and that means today we here at the Power of Women in Insurance podcast have another amazing woman in the insurance space <laughs> that we are here to be able to rock and roll and have a great time with. So today I'm actually talking to someone who brightens up every single room that she walks into, oh. and that is Stacy King. Stacy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. It's so exciting to be here. Well, I, I, I appreciate you asking me. Oh, well, you know, I have wanted to have you on for a while. So it's just been a, a you know, a, I wanted to, I just work it through my list of people and you've been on there for a while. But the fun thing is, is that you're a little bit different from, uh, you know, somebody who works for a carrier, somebody who works in an agency, somebody who works at, you are in the media space for the insurance community, the entire insurance community. And I am thrilled to be able to have you on because you have so many pieces moving at all times and you are <laughs> so awesome with everything that you do. So I appreciate you taking the time to join us today. So thank you, Stacey, as we get started, tell people a little bit about what you do and um, how you have come to where you are in the media space in the insurance community. Sure thing. Uh, so I um, basically am, I would say a newbie rather uh, for insurance. I've only been in insurance about 10 to 11 years. So I don't know, some, some would consider that old folk. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, but my background is in marketing and communications. I have been in a marketing communications or sales role in literally every position that I've ever held in my career. And um, at one time I was in advertising uh, specifically, I've worked um, for a newspaper, I've worked for, um, you know, the AJC in Atlanta, and I've also worked just on my own uh, producing an advertising magazine. So that's kind of where I learned to kind of hone in the skills of how do you market to consumers. Right. And then of course, as I got um, further in my career, I moved into the staffing space. And so I worked for a couple of staffing uh, organizations and I did marketing. Um, and, and I was kind of that middleman who I had to um, go out and find clients that we would then uh, service as recruiters and staffers. And I managed agency practices at that time and operations. So I also had to kind of sell to staff. Here's what this client needs and here's what you need to do and here's why. And it's so important. And we also had to make sure that we were finding good people. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, at that point in back in my career, you know, the, it was it was very much um, boots to the ground. You were having to, as independent insurance agents do, you were having to figure out how do I sell this particular branch's um, expertise in hiring to the people in my community. And so that's kind of where I honed my skills um, in, you know, just business to consumer marketing. Um, later on, I started expanding more into working um, mainly B2B and helping other businesses to expand um, what their message needed to be, helping them to find those in their space that they wanted to work with. Um, and then, of course, as social media kind of started exploding, I grabbed onto that with all my might because I was doing recruiting at the time. Um, oh, and yeah. so it was already on LinkedIn because of that. You know, LinkedIn started while I was in the recruiting industry. So I've been on LinkedIn since it started. And I guess because I kind of grabbed onto it so early, I was able to kind of start being seen as the person who uses stuff. My right. husband laughs at me when I say that because he used to have coworkers that would contact him if they wanted to know how to use something because they knew that I had at least tried it <laughs> and either <laughs> figured it out or had said, oh, that stinks. I'm not doing it again. So, um, but that's kind of how I, you know, hone my skills. Uh, I just started using things as much yeah. as possible and, and kind of testing it all out. And I got good at social media. And then I was recruited to come into the insurance industry by Avi Knight. I'm sure that you know Avi. Yeah. Uh, everyone knows Avi. And uh, he had asked me at that time to come in and um, specifically to run the education department for the Big Eye of Georgia. Okay. And so I started right into association management and learning from the ground up what agents need. You know, whether it be, you know, from an education standpoint, what you guys need to see and learn and um, what resources that you need. 
um, at that time I was kind of organizing the um, prof not the professors, but the the folks teaching the classes. Oh right. I was trying. Yeah. I was tr getting those folks to come yes. in. Thank you. <laughs> there would be something that you know. <laughs> When the brain just doesn't work, it doesn't right. work. Oh, no, I get um, it, 100%, all the time. <laughs> but yeah, the instructor. So I was pulling in instructors. I was um, helping to write the class criteria of, you know, you had to send everything off the state to get all of that done. And so we were coming up with the class, coming up with um, what we felt the agents would really relate to. And we were, you know, doing pretty well at that. At the end, we, I think I did just under 300 classes in a year. Oh, wow. And that was, of course, online at the time and in person, because that was all a new concept back then. Yep. We were doing some webinars and some CE online, but, you know, it was kind of still coming around. Yep. Um, and of course, I managed all at that same time, I managed all the social media for the independent insurance agents of Georgia. And so honing my skills there, we also yep. kind of branched out and started helping other agencies outside of our state that had just reached out and asked for help as well as inside state. And then national had asked me to do some training at that time for my counterparts, other education directors across the country. Nice. So I was going out and helping other um, directors to, to figure out what classes to offer and how to teach social media. And so that was kind of my start into the industry. And then it just grew from there. I, I left um, the big guy after about five years um, specifically nothing against Georgia. I just wanted to try something new for a while. Yep. And I was asked to go work for a broker that it was regional at the time and had expanded nationally because they had just opened some business in California. And we did a rebranding project. I did a website design and all kinds of stuff that goes along with that. And then we did some marketing automation projects. And um, then after there for about three years, I went on the agency side and I've even worked there. Wow. So um, helped a, a Georgia agency that had multiple uh, brands and multiple organizations that they worked with. Um, I think we did 28 new websites in a year. Oh my goodness. With that project. That is a yeah. lot of websites in one year. I mean, I redid mine this yes. year and I thought I was about to die. I just thought yes. I was about to die. It was yeah. a lot. It is a lot. But once you learn kind of what the framework needs to look like and kind of what the, as we talked about, you know, assets, uh, different things yep. that you have to know that you're going to need, you kind of get it down and you can, you can knock them out pretty quickly. Yep. So, um, that was it. And so I've kind of done a little bit of everything at this point. Um, now, of course, for the last two and a half years, I have worked with, um, agency nation and and it's been so so much fun i am the digital contact director for agency nation okay. and um what that means basically is i'm responsible for all content that hits agencynation.com recruiting people like yourself to write for agency nation and to share your story and um and then also kind of i look out and i see who in the industry is doing really cool things and just when they're doing something neat i have the fun job of saying hey i like what you're doing would you mind sharing that with other people and we go through awesome. that process of bringing them online and uh, agency nation radio plays into that we have a podcast as well as you know and uh that's every other week and then i write newsletters i write um a uh a article or a, a section in the magazine for independent agent magazine every nice. month that's agency nation focused and that's just one of my accounts so i have i i am actually an independent contractor i work for myself so agency nation is a client among others right Wow. It's wow. Fun. And I know that you also do, you coordinate the fact that Agency Nation has different, they highlight different agency uh, people and professionals through yes. their Instagram account takeovers, Instagram takeovers, and uh, Facebook lives and all sorts of other things too, because I know that we've worked There's together so on so much that fun. before and you have your yes. hands in all of that. So that is a yeah. lot of work. It is, but it's fun. I mean, at the end of the day, I get to play with technology all day yeah. long. And, and new technologies that come out, I get to try different things. Um, I get to um, really be the, the guinea pig. I, I, love, I love being that person that people will call and say, hey, have you used this yet? Or have you done this 
you know, with agency uh-huh. nation, how do I do it? Or have you done it with another client? Or um, just if I'm talking to somebody and I hear that they're struggling with something, I'll make a suggestion because nine times out of 10, I've tried it or right. I've, you know, been through it at least once or twice to where you can offer some suggestions or support. I love it. I love it. So do you find that insurance agency people, okay, just people, insurance agents across the board, people, uh, account managers, um, (coughs) owners, agents, all of them are very receptive to the media conversation because I know that sometimes the insurance industry doesn't move at the same pace that the rest of the world kind of moves at. And um, with that, how, how has that been for you to be able to, to kind of be that media spokesperson, that cutting edge, that trying new things, the constantly pushing that envelope in an industry that is not necessarily known for its technological innovation? Yeah. You know, it's, it's always a challenge because when I first started out, um, you know, years ago, I really truly felt like I was just dragging people along (laughs) and, and like I've mentioned before, um, you know, I would teach classes and I would have somebody, you know, have their eyes open to what social media and media and in particular can do for an agent. But then they just, as soon as their eyes open, then they realize, oh, I got to figure out how to do that. And that's a lot of work on top of everything else that they have. So I would say that, you know, um, it's not that anymore in 2021, you know, people are, are having to kind of come on board. They, they understand that it's not an option anymore. And they see the amount of change that's hitting the industry at this present time. And honestly, I think it scares them the Mm. amount of things that are changing, but I, I, I encourage agents, if nothing else, um, you know, you don't have to be the expert at all things, right? You can rely on other resources. You can rely on other um, people to fill in the gaps in the areas that maybe you're not as strong in. And if nothing else, you can find people like, you know, myself, or there's tons out in the industry right now. Um, Kelly Donahue Perot is a great one. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people like that, that can come in and consult with agencies and say, Hey, we see that these areas you're really good at. And this other one area, maybe you're missing, but we can, we can kind of fill in the gap there and we can help you to train your agents to do the things that they need to be doing so that you all can focus on your business and core, you know, responsibilities. And that's where I think that, Um, in today's world, especially in 2022, that things will start to move towards is that um, people need to engage others and they need to Mm -hmm. be open to having others make suggestions and helping them with their agency in any capacity that they can, because that's the only way that you're going to be able to keep up with the changes coming. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I always make the the analysis. I know it probably sounds really bad, but I have always make the analysis that my mother-in-law I'll, you know, went out, bought this beautiful curve 4K TV multiple years ago, it's like cutting edge, totally cutting edge with this like sound bar and, you know, and all this other stuff, but she couldn't work the remote and she refused <laughs> to learn to use the remote. And yes. um, she bought all this stuff to try to be cutting edge and cool. But then whenever it came down to trying to implement, she really like, she pretty much put it on um, you know, she pretty much put it on uh, this one channel and left it there. I mean, she yeah. watched the girls basketball on, on, on ESPN, I think. And then I think she knew how to flip over to like HBO and like watch HBO or something, but she paid yeah. for every single service, every single channel, every single, everything, but she had these, you know, these two areas. So I always say it with technology, we need to make sure we embrace it all. And we don't necessarily have to know everything. We don't necessarily have to do everything. But the idea is, is that we can't be that person who has all these things that are awesome and amazing. And then we don't know how to work the remote, right? We don't know how <laughs> to work the pieces that make it work because even right. then maybe we could, we could outsource it. Maybe we could ask somebody on our team to be able to do it, you know? And, well, and, and then you can even call on the people. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say, you can even call on the people within your agency to to kind of take responsibilities for certain things like, um, like agency management systems. They're great. They have a wealth of information in them, 
But if you're not utilizing it to its best advantage, if you're not using that to then kind of spearhead your marketing efforts and to uncover possibilities that are within the agency management systems where you can kind of, um, you know, use the information in new and exciting ways, yeah. where you're not constantly churning for your next client or your next um, opportunity where kind of things are developing and uncovering themselves. It's a beautiful thing because autonomy means that, um, you know, you're able to then shift that priority and that focus to something else because yes. the systems are working themselves. And I think that's the challenge that a lot of agencies right now are undergoing. They've got so many new systems in different organizations, mm-hmm. especially the mid-size organizations. Um, you know, they've got new AMS systems. They may have marketing automation systems set up, but it's just they hear all these meetings and all these things that they need to be doing. And it's almost overwhelming. They can't, um, they, they also need to be producing. Yeah. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, that's what pays them, not all the other stuff that you need to learn. So I say, um, you know, the old adage is you can eat an elephant. If you try to eat an elephant all at once, it's not going to happen. But if you just take little bits and bites as you go, you start to kind of learn more and more about it and you start to embrace it a little bit more. And before you know it, boof, you've done what you need right. to do. It just took a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. And I always try to, I always try to say, and I try to tell my team all the time, we just need to learn one thing today. That's it. Period. (laughs) I love that. Just one thing, you know, and then tomorrow you already know that other thing and now you're learning something else. Now, by the end of the week, you've learned five things, you know, and we're just taking little baby steps, little baby steps, little baby steps, because it allows us to be a little bit more open and receptive without feeling so overwhelmed. It's just one little baby step every single day. And, and I love that. I love the idea too of um, really taking, and I've tried to do this for myself. Sometimes I'm not great at it during the day, but at least I'll, I'll, you know, I have the luxury of having a grown child. So I don't have a child to like deal with at night anymore, like a lot of the younger agents. But um, I do try to take a specific amount of time every day to read or to listen to audiobooks or to listen to podcasts because you're just going to absorb what you need. And even if it's, you know, you're cutting the grass and you're listening to a podcast or you're doing, you know, you can multitask yeah. really well or like, you know, driving home, whatever it might be. Um, you need to be doing those things because it, it gives you ideas and it sparks creativity and it makes you think of new ways of expressing the things that you've been doing, you know, just in a different way. Yes. And, and that's really where we are today. You know, agencies and agents in particular need to be out there marketing themselves, Mm. but they're doing it online more than they were. They're having meetings, they're having, you know, um, introductory client sessions and all that kind of stuff on zoom or what have you. But what they're forgetting is in addition to the in-person meetings and the normal daily business that you need to be doing, you also need to be developing that digital footprint that works for you when you're not in yep. meetings yep. or while you're already like you're focused here. It can be working out here at the same time, because believe me, the people that you want to meet, they're looking online to see who you are and what you do, and what your expertise is, and what activity you've done online, and it's all searchable. Easily, in five seconds, I can find out anything I need to know about anybody. Absolutely. But are you focused on making sure that you're putting your best foot forward out there, and and sharing with the world what your expertise is, and who you are as an agent, and, um, and your personal brand? Yes. And I think that, I think that if we could really embrace that as a marketing medium, as a brand, it doesn't make it as, it makes it bigger, I guess, but it doesn't make it as scary, I guess, to some degree, because then it works for us. It works 24 hours a day and we can be really intentional about what we put out there, what we, how we develop our, our community And how we develop that. And I think that is so valuable because then that footprint just gets, again, just like if we try to learn one thing every day, if we put out one piece of content every day, one piece of content, it just grows and it grows and it grows until people start finding us. I mean, how many of us go out for dinner 
without to a brand new restaurant without checking out the Google reviews or Yelp. Um, right. I did it one time and it was a horrible disaster and I won't do it again. Right. And um, right. <laughs> we were in Tampa a couple of weeks ago and we were walking into a restaurant and I grabbed my husband's sleeve and I go, we haven't Googled this. We haven't, we haven't yelped it. I was like, there's no way I'm going to eat here. What Hold do my on. friends say? Do I want right. to go here? <laughs> exactly. And I haven't heard because we're in a different city. So I was like, I haven't heard anything about it. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, and it, there was this fear because I hadn't checked it out, but we do the same thing. Whenever we hear about a new company, what, like we're sitting around talking and somebody goes, oh, check out this company that does blank. What do we do? We go online. We look at their website. We look them up. We read the review. Who do you know on. that they know? Yeah. Yep. And we need to put intentional uh, information out there yeah. into, the, into the world so that we're controlling that message and that branding rather than letting it be accidental and somebody going, oh, mm, I don't know. This agency has like two reviews, you know, and maybe yeah. they're, you know, are they really a real agency? Are they really like a right. real company, you know, I mean, yes, you wonder. And, and at the end of the day, it does not have to be that difficult. I know a lot of um, agencies in particular go, oh my gosh, I can't keep up with posting every week or every day or whatever it might be. Again, there's strength in teams. Mm -hmm. And here's the beautiful thing that in 2021, you can write a podcast or write a blog, blog post that can then be turned into a podcast or that can be, you know, a video that can be turned into a blog post. You can, you know, messaging is so simple. You can record an answer. Here's as easy as it has to be. Look in your inbox. Go to your inbox and find the questions that your clients ask most. Mm. What are they asking you? Now you won't want to use specific names or any, you know, examples, but you can be very general right. and you can go on and quickly record a video of yourself answering that question and helping that um, client, future client, see the big picture. Here's why I'm sharing this information with you. He, you know, here's why you need long-term health care. Here's why you need, you know, renter's insurance. Here's my short five second answer, you know, really you're talking for, I would say no longer than one to two minutes tops on video. Right. But what's beautiful about that is you can then take that little short clip. You can, there's software and, and I have lots that I can recommend. I won't go through a big long list here, but there's software that you can use to transcribe the words. So now you've got the video living and then you've got the transcript of the video. Now you take that transcript and you cut it up into little bite-sized pieces and you create little bitty, you know, social posts from that. And you're going to put all of that onto your blog, on your agency's blog, along with the video, right? So you got the right. video at the top, you got the blog at the bottom. Now you're linking back to that on all your social posts. That's one person taking two minutes and then maybe about 30 minutes additional work to get that up on a blog. And now imagine if five to 10 of your staff, let's just say five of your staff did that same thing every week. How many pieces of content is that? That's a lot. It's a lot. And it's constantly going out in different formats, in different ways with minimal effort. But then what the coolest thing is, is once it's on your site, and it lives there organically, it's going to grow. There's going to be, you know, a lot of um, search engines crawling your site constantly. They love change. They love to see new content. There's going to be specific keyword search that possibly, you know, you're tagging and you're making sure that um, people are seeing that information. And even if you're not an expert at how to get it all up on your site, you could hire somebody for that part. Right. And totally. you could say, okay, we're going to get you this information. And this, the guts, you make it pretty, you make it happen and put it all out there. And then before you know it, now you're, you've got a great digital footprint for the entire agency as a whole. And each of your independent, you know, producers or your CSRs or whoever is contributing now their activity levels are growing and it just compounds from there. Well, and the beauty of it too, is that it works for years to come you know, yes. forever. And you put it it's out working there. working for you when you're, <laughs> it's working. when you're doing other things. Yep. 
completely. You could be on vacation for Memorial Day, right? Whatever. And somebody may be able to find a video that you did back, you know, two years ago. And it's still yes. working. It's still there. It's still connecting with your ideal client. And um, it really makes an impact on not only your search rankings and so forth, but then also being able to connect with the client. And one of the things I found is that if my team makes videos, which they're not thrilled with it, but if they do, then the reality is, is that somebody may see them. And so then they don't feel like they have to talk to Teresa and ask a question. They know that Rachel is awesome and amazing because she's made this video and they feel connected to Rachel. They don't have yes. to feel connected to Teresa. So therefore right. it helps our team members to connect directly with our clients as well. Not just us and not just via a social media idea, but yeah. also on a personal level. Yeah. It's like, you know, the, a lot of agencies um, have done this, but some have never tried it, you know, replying to emails with quick video, um, using video quotes and all of the forms that you have available in the different automated process for that. There's so many unique ways of communicating with the people that you're doing business with that um, it's just a shame to not try it and see right. how it goes. Now, obviously you can't throw darts at every single little thing that comes your way, but big picture, if you start to be really, um, instead of reactive about your marketing, very proactive and, and making sure that you're planning things out, yep. you know when <laughs> end of year is coming. You know when renewal season is. You know when, you know, wedding season is. You know when, you know, there's, there's these big ebbs and flows throughout the year that you know that business is going to happen. Look at a calendar and say, okay, during this month, we're going to do a video on this and this and this and this and this. You know, these are topics that are usually hot buttons during this time back to school two months before that, talk about renter's insurance because you got kids going to college, right? You know, there's just specific things that you can start plugging into what we marketers call a publication marketing calendar, right? And you can plan that stuff out and then you know what's coming down. So you plan it into your, you know, monthly agenda. Here's the video that I need to produce. It's going to be on this topic. And here are the things that I need to mention, because these are the things that we get the most questions about. Right. Again, look back in your inbox, your CSRs will know. Yep. Yep. I love it. I love it. And you know, what about for all the people out there who feel like video or blogs have to be perfect, or they want to be able to be an Instagram influencer in order to be able to go live on Facebook or something, you know, and I mean, and I, you know, I mentioned it on this podcast multiple times that I struggle with um, whenever I don't want to do my hair or whatever, right? <laughs> whenever I got the messy bun, Girls. Going, right? You know, yeah, women tend to be really, really difficult about that. We are. Um, we are. I'm the worst. I don't want to go on if I don't have my eyelashes on. <laughs> right. Because, well, you know, I have to, I have to color them because they're blonde. And so you look really tired when you don't yeah. do it. Um, I, you know, it, nothing has to be perfect. Um, by all means, every single time I've done a podcast lately or a video lately, I've forgotten the word. It's just happens. You get, yeah. you, you have that brain fog. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, but I think honestly, the organic natural videos get more engagement and the statistics show it, they get more engagement than sometimes the professional produced Yeah, because at, at, at most of the time you're going to look at a professional and polished and perfect video that somebody created and they may have taken you know months to create this beautiful piece that's online for a good 60 seconds maybe you know two to three minutes tops if right. you're lucky and you'll watch 20 seconds of it right and then i'm tired of that go to the next thing so all that other work is null and void right right where if you just picked up a, a camera phone you know, camera on your phone and you put your webcam on or whatever it might be and record a quick message and do short 20 to 30 seconds. Boom, boom, boom. Cut this into these. Yep. And then that's what you're putting up online because people in 2021 get lots of stuff at them and there's just stuff coming constantly. Yep. But 
they can absorb it better in short little bursts. Yes. You can always expand a long, a short message into a longer post. Right. And you can use things like there's, um, there's sites out there called uh, HyperWrite, or there's WordTune, or Google Trans, uh, Translate, and, or not Translate, Google AI Assisted Transcription, where it kind of goes in and it helps you to elongate your messaging and, and kind of make it sound a, li a little different. So what you would normally type out, and you may not think you're a great writer, you can click a button and it'll make four other suggestions of how you can say that same word or sentence and verse and how it can, you know, be expanded a little bit. That's how you start growing your, your, your posts so that they start with this idea, but then they get more and more and more information on it. And before you know it, you've written with half your own words and half AI, a 500 word blog post. Right, right, I love it. Or 10 posts on social media. <laughs> and another thing that I've really enjoyed doing is I'll just go ahead and do the notes on my uh, cell phone. And I just go ahead and I do voice on my notes tablet, whatever on my, on my cell phone about a topic. And then it transcribes it for me right there. And then I just clean it up a little bit and put it on. And it's something it. I just verbally just said, you know, Hey, today we're talking about business income replacement, whatever, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, and then we can have either Google AI or something like that, clean it up or maybe make it prettier if we want to yes. do that. But then it's 90% done and we didn't even have to type a single that, That's it. That's it. And how many times are you watching a video that someone else might have even produced or mm -hmm. you've read a, 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 you've read a book or you've read an article or whatever it is. And it made you think, Ooh, I could do something like that. And you write it down on your to-do list and it sits there and nothing ever happens. Right. Right. I'm the, I'm the worst. My husband hates it because I'm always on my phone when we're sitting and watching TV shows yep. at night, just the two of us were sitting there with our dogs and, and I'm watching TV show and I'm scrolling and I see something, I go, Ooh, that would make a good post or, Ooh, I have this idea. And instead of writing it on my to-do list, I get out Google Docs. It's on my phone all the time. I open it up and I write topic, subject line, da, 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 da. I expand on it. And, and what's cool about your phone is that it already has the Google AI built in. Right. So it'll go ahead and start making suggestions for you. Or you can have all the other apps that I mentioned on your phone and you just start expanding on it then. And before you know it, I've got half the thing written and I did it on my phone sitting in front of my TV at night on my couch. Yep. 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 I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so if somebody's really wanting to start somewhere, what is probably, and we've talked about so many like easy, quick ways to get started, but yeah. you know, I think a lot of people get overwhelmed by the idea of all the media options out there. Where would you suggest somebody to just start? I would say the most important thing that insurance agents specifically need to be doing is making sure that your LinkedIn profile is complete, it's professional, and it specifically talks about all the things that you personally are good at, that you like to do, that other people would consider you an expert at, or at least that they would recommend you for, and start building out that profile. If you don't have a picture, let's just, and it's sad that I have to say this in 2021, but there's a lot of people out there that still don't have a picture. Right. Get your darn picture on LinkedIn. Make sure that your so description, <laughs> that your that your description in your um, profile shares not just what your job is. Everybody knows you have a job. Tell them who you are in your job. What is it that you are really good at? It. What is it that you're passionate about? What are the things that make you a great professional? Start polishing that up. Start adding on um, additional expertise. Start asking for recommendations. You work with people every single day that like you and think that you'd do a good job for them. It would take five seconds for you to click a button and ask them to make a recommendation of you. That yeah. starts building up those endorsements 
and those recommendations on LinkedIn so that when you're doing searches, you're going to start coming up a little bit better. And then lastly, I would say, if you can't produce your own content, then you need to be engaging with others' content. Mm. You need to be actively reading people within the industry, your clients, your customers, look them up. They're active. They're probably having to do it for their jobs. They appreciate someone who's going to take the time to read what they're writing and what they're producing and make comments about it and engage with them about it. And then let's just go there. Maybe just maybe it might open up the opportunity for you to get your foot in the door with companies that you want to see. How much easier is it to call for an appointment after you've engaged with someone online and they recognize your name? Right, right, right. And then, you know, it's huge when people just recognize you or see you because then it's that no like, and trust. It's that social proof that, that you are a legitimate professional. And somebody that they want to do business with. And if I can teach people anything, here's the line I want you to remember. What can I do for you today? Mm. I have a lot of contacts in the XYZ industry, or I have a lot of resources at my disposal. How can I help you? That's the line that everyone needs to start with. Because at the end of the day, if you help others and you put them first, and you try to really be a, a good mentor and resource and um, advisor for them, it'll come back to you every time. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, Stacey, I know you work, you're work. you working directly with Agency Nation. Tell us a little bit about your podcast real quick so that we can go ahead and make sure we connect with you on your personal podcast. Agency Nation has a podcast too, which is amazing and awesome. But tell us also about your podcast. Yeah. So while Agency Nation focuses on, you know, digital marketing and um, data and technology and culture and all those things, um, we, for my personal podcast, you know, I've been in podcasting for a while and I just finally said, I'm going to start doing something that's kind of a passion project for me. And the name of it is This Wobbly Life. And there's a reason behind the name that if you listen to my first episode, you'll understand what the reason is, but I go by kind of the name of Wobbly Girl. And um, the reason is, is that I, um, I have a neuromuscular disease that kind of impacts my ability to walk and my hand use and all that kind of stuff. And so um, for me, it's always been something that I was very passionate about and that I felt strongly that, um, there are positive mentors out there. There are the, the woes, woe is me. And the, you know, I'm, I'm having a terrible day kind of people, but I've always gravitated towards those people who take negative things in their lives and turn them into something positive and try to help to, you know, help the next guy down the line. And so, um, I really appreciate those organizations and the opportunities that I've been given to kind of look at things a little differently in my life. And that's where I feel like I wanted to take this wobbly life. I wanted to show people who have had a lot of adversity and who have got various different challenges and who overcome them and succeed and do really cool things and big things in their lives, even though they've had some challenges. So I love that. That's it. I love that. I love that. I love and that. You can find I, it anywhere you listen to a podcast. This wobbly ah, life. This wobbly life. Ah, I love it. Well, you know what, Stacey, you have been amazing. I'm super excited for all the things that you're doing for agents, for agency owners, for people in the insurance industry across the board, helping us with digital media, education, inspiration, and all of that. If somebody wants to reach out to you specifically, how can they connect with you? Yeah, you can always find me on social media, Stacy King, or you can um, email me sk at Stacy S D A C I E King dot C O, Stacy King dot co. I love it. I love it. Well, you know what? Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I know that you're hopefully you. breaking down those barriers for social media and all those things digital for other insurance agencies out there. So keep plugging along. I love it. You're doing a great Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, really appreciate this is, it. Well, I appreciate you. And I, I've enjoyed doing everything we've done together. We've been done Facebook Lives together. We've done Instagram stuff together. So we're just going to keep that up in 22. I'm excited about that. Yes. 
All right. Well, everybody, this is another amazing episode with another amazing woman in the insurance space. And we do have a new episode every single Wednesday. Make sure to give us a review, subscribe to the podcast. And if you have any suggestions about who you want to be able to hear from, reach out to me directly. And I would love to be able to connect with other amazing women in the insurance space. Thanks for listening today. And we'll talk to you next week.